Have you ever found yourself wondering, what is a man anyhow? What am I? What are you? So did Herman Melville and Walt Whitman, who set out to answer these questions in very different ways. What is the lesson that the book of Jonah teaches? Shipmates, it is a two-stranded lesson, a lesson to us all as sinful men, and a lesson to me as a pilot of the living God. As sinful Walking men, the old it is a lesson to us all, because it is a story of, of the side, same hard-heartedness, suddenly awakened fears, the swift punishment, repentance, the broad range, prayers, and, the and finally of the deliverance and miles, joy of Jonah. With tailed meteors, throwing fireballs like the rest. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars. Walt Whitman wrote this line as a culmination of a spiritual journey, seeking knowledge, understanding, and intimacy with the entirety of existence by contemplating the grass. Grass that has grown on the earth since its creation, small and spreading, ancient, elemental. But writing just before Whitman, Herman Melville went looking for the same answers in much larger things. So maybe, like Whitman, Ishmael was just a wanderer. And like Ahab, Whitman might have been a man trying to know the world and its secret knowledge. And here they all are, just trying to communicate. Maybe Captain Peleg would have given Whitman and Ishmael the same advice. Can't ye see the world where you stand? They probably would have all said no. It is the journey that matters to them. At some level, the characters are just trying to communicate and know things. And the authors are looking at the many, many problems with that. When Melville set out to understand the nature of existence, he voices the journey through ignorant Ishmael and maddened Ahab. Confined to close quarters with men from every corner of the world, they set off to chase down the Leviathan. Moby Dick is not only ubiquitous, but immortal, for immortality is but ubiquity in time. How all this came to be, what the white whale was to them, or how their unconscious understandings also in some dim, unsuspecting way he might have seemed the gliding great demon of this sea of life. All this to explain would be to dive deeper than Ishmael can go. Sometimes the lines of communicating get crossed. Sometimes the things that connect us are downright terrifying. Well, well, my dear comrade and twin brother, thought I, as I drew in and then slacked off the rope to every swell of the sea. What matters it, after all? Are you not the precious image of each and all men in this wailing world? That unsounding ocean you gasp in is life. And though Whitman's journey was a solitary one, he tried to take all of America, all of humanity, with him. Both Whitman and Melville ask us to wonder if sometimes we are left, isolated, confronting the abyss, lost at sea, maybe that's where everything starts to make sense. Pip saw the multitudinous, God omnipresent, coral insects that out of the firmament of waters heaved the colossal orbs. He saw God's foot upon the treadle of the loom, and he spoke it, and therefore his shipmates called him mad. So man's insanity is heaven's sense. Until we come back either senseless or transcendent. In turn, they each attempt to glimpse God. Ishmael looks to Ahab, and Ahab to the whale. In the great sperm whale, this high and mighty godlike dignity inherent in the brow, that gazing on it, you feel the deity and dread powers more forcibly than beholding any other object in living nature. And Whitman looks to his body and his soul, and other bodies and souls, and everything else. Space and time, now I see it is true, what I guessed at, what I guessed at when I loafed in the grass, what I guessed while I lay alone in my bed. And again, as I walked the beach under the paling stars of the morning, my ties and ballast leave me, my elbows rest in sea gaps. I skirt sierras, my palms over continents. I am afoot with my vision. But really, they're coming to know themselves and the things that connect us as people. So maybe Ishmael chooses presumption over understanding. Ahab chooses obsession over communication. Melville suggests nothing can be understood at all. And Whitman chooses everything, good, bad, contradictions, and all. So that in the end, the grass and the hemp rope were all woven together. So even if every man goes down with the ship, 
and maybe we're still not sure what a man is. The stars and the grass and the ocean still remain. Yay. 